joining me now via Zoom is Oshawa MPP Jennifer French. Thanks for, for joining us. And as, as you said prior to starting the interview, you came to the Ed Broadbent game kind of late, late in, mm -hmm. late in, the, in the game, did you not? I did. So many people remember, um, you know, him being the face of the NDP as, as uh, the NDP was taking shape in Canada. And I had the opportunity to actually shake his hand and meet him in person just after my election in, in 2014. So that's when, that's sort of when I picked up the, the Ed Broadbent uh, story in person. And, um, and I'm really, I'm really grateful that I did. Now, obviously you knew who he was well, well before, <laughs> but what, what were your first impressions upon actually getting to meet him in person and, and shaking his hand? What were your first impressions? Well, I was like a fangirl and um, and was a bit nervous. And it was actually at, uh, I, I think it was the Broadbent Institute gala dinner that was at the former Maple Leaf Gardens. And I knew the table he was, where he was sitting and he was having, um, we were all, you know, having conversations and having dinner. And I plucked up the courage and went over to stand and meet him. Now, remember, I'd been elected. Um, he had sent a quote for us in, in the campaign, but I hadn't actually met him. And I stood there and I waited and he very politely got up and I shook his hand and I said, we're both from Oshawa and I've been you know, eager to meet you, Mr. Broadbent. And he said, oh, that's really nice in Oshawa. Oh, that's great. And what's your name? And I said, I'm Jennifer French. And then he, he sort of bounced, oh, Jennifer. And we had both been excited uh, because bringing bringing Oshawa back into the new Democrat fold was was I think something he was pretty excited about but we both I was fangirling and he was excited and so we we had kind of a special moment um, for me it was of glee <laughs> but anyway that was our first meeting and not to say that set the tone but we've always been quite glad to see each other and um, and cheer each other on I think so pretty pretty neat I have big shoes to fill, though, you know, in Oshawa. So I worked yeah. I worked pretty hard when I talked to him and he'd say, how is it going to be able to give him good news? So. <laughs> uh, I was going to ask you, um, you know, he was such a popular man and, and well liked and well loved, no matter what someone's political stripes were. Why do you think that? Why do you think he was able to um, you know, transcend all those barriers? Um, I think because he was kind and he was good, he was a very decent man. And I think because of his principles, um, you know, folks folks didn't see him as someone just to vote for. They saw him as someone to listen to and learn from. And whether at the end of the day they agreed with him or not, um, I think that they had a sense of of his convictions and of uh, his his vision for Canada. And so I think he was very well respected and yes, well liked and relatable. You know, you had he had some some politicians around him in his day who were a bit flashy and fancy, and he was relatable. And you know, had his corduroy suit jackets and um, a kind word, but a well a well thought out uh, presentation always. And I certainly know that in Oshawa, it was very interesting. You know, if you had him at an event, you'd later hear from some of. You know your conservative friends. Well, how come you didn't invite me? I'd I'd like to meet Ed. I'd like to hear him speak. Um, so it wasn't a partisan thing. It was a very personal and human um, relationship that he built across across the country, certainly, uh, but definitely locally. And in speaking with him and meeting with him, what's your number one takeaway? What do you feel is his legacy, not only to Oshawa but the entire country? Um, I'm going to put it in my own words because they were as I understood them, um, very community based. And I know that the whole country is mourning his loss and that the country has its own reflections on, on who he was and what he contributed. Um, but Ed himself, when he came to Oshawa, uh, when we were kicking off the Ed Broadbent Park, his, his comments that day were not about himself or his legacy, so to speak, or his contributions. It was about the people in the community that had shaped his life. 
and his relationships, um, you know, the volunteers and the, the youth programs, um, you know, the, the kind folks that he met along the way who were very local, who maybe didn't have a, you know, a, a national profile, um, but who are the roots and heart and soul of a community. And so I think it also speaks to your earlier question of how people saw him. They saw him as a real person and a very decent man. Um, and I think, I think that comes from the relationships that he built all along the way, um, you know, from, from start until his, uh, you know, recent years. So I, I think the community piece, the human connections, the remembering why we do what we do and, and who we walk alongside. Um, and that speaks to the, the social justice, fairness, um, a lot of the, the principles that he stood for, democratic and social uh, kindness and fairness, really. Did he insist that you call him Ed? Oh, I think as soon as I could get away with calling him Ed, I did. I don't remember having to be. <laughs> I don't remember having to be told to call him Ed, and I think that was just the instinct. You know, uh, you might try Ed Broadbent or Mr. Broadbent first, but but Ed was um, Ed be Ed was a, a friend to people and even those that uh, you know that hadn't met him yet. It's almost like a stranger was a friend he hadn't met yet. I think so. And I think because he saw the world uh, as a, a place that, that needed to be kinder, that needed to be gentler, that needed to look around and say, uh, that person needs help. This is a, you know, a place that needs our attention. Um, I think it probably was very natural for him to see value in people. Um, those that he hadn't met, those that he had met, I don't know that that is what makes the difference, right? There's someone, uh, someone to know, and then there's, there's someone to value. And that's, that's where Ed, um, you know, really was able to make those connections. And that's what made so much sense about what he, what he stood for. Um, you know, the world is not a fair place and no one could argue otherwise. And so how do we, how do we make things more fair? How do we look out for, um, for those who are having a rough time? What are our social support networks networks look like, and how can they be better uh, to make sure that people have what they need to live uh, to live the life that they would that they would set out to live? We've talked to others who have said that you know he was so well loved, so well thought of. Um, he was the prime minister that never was. Why do you think he didn't achieve his ultimate goal? Um, I can't say that he didn't achieve his ultimate goal, right? Like that's, that's for Ed to answer what, what those goals would be. I think uh, the last time that I heard him speak, which was not, not that long ago, he's got a, you know, um, a new book out that he did in collaboration with other um, progressive thinkers and at that presentation, he talked a lot about how we make um, how we make things better, right? The the fairness, um, the need for equity, and really what that that looks like in a human sense. And so I think probably the goals that that he didn't realize are the goals that we none of us have that we're still working towards, right? That that kinder, better, fairer society. So whether he was uh, you know, wish that he had been prime minister. I think I wish <laughs> that he had been prime minister and, and wonder how much better off the country could be had some of his, um, you know, principles really been able to take take shape um, in a broader sense. But I don't know. I think that he was constantly working towards those goals uh, for society. And we should still be, too. <laughs> we may not all want to be prime minister. I do not want to be prime minister. Uh, but that we we should have, should have that vision in mind as, as we do our work. So the last time you saw him in person then, that was at the uh, unveiling of the Ed Broadbent Waterfront Park in Oshawa. No, 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 it wasn't. That was, um, that was a special day. Uh, and I hadn't, we took the group picture at the ribbon cutting there. And then uh, he was getting shuttled off somewhere and I ran over to the car and we opened the door and I jumped in and took a selfie uh, and we had a bit of a giggle. That was not the last time I saw him, but that was a, um, a special moment that I've actually been been thinking of lately. 
at no, it was at his his new book that his um, that they released through the the Broadbent Institute, and it was a, a speaking engagement in Toronto that I went in for, uh, I guess, a few months ago, and had the opportunity to hear him speak, but also, uh, as he did, had the opportunity to hear the voices of others that he was lifting up and wanting to make sure that we were able to, li- you know, hear from and learn from. Um, he's included them in his book, but it it. You know, the work of the Broadbent Institute, I'll still follow along because I think uh, that was a big that was a big legacy piece that he poured his his heart and soul into in recent years, uh, continuing to do that work. So that was the last time I stood in line with my book and I waited to get right up to the front and it was a long line and and he signed my book and uh, and we took a we had a bit of a, you know, a selfie moment and I wished him well and and off I went. So. We only have about a, another minute. I just want to to to, to ask you um, as we end our segment here, your fondest memory of Ed Broadbent. <laughs> okay, maybe isn't the most meaningful, but I made him a scroll as a new newly elected member uh, representing Oshawa. I had made him a fancy scroll um, for his birthday. I believe it was his 80th birthday, and uh, I went. And they let me they let me go in and visit with him to give him this scroll. And I have a series of pictures that I'm not sharing of him hiding behind the scroll and holding it up and and us being silly and getting into the giggles and uh, while they were trying to take a serious picture of the two of us. And there isn't a serious picture of us that day. And and I just think that that's what I will remember was he was a man of such purpose, but there was a reason for that. You know, there, he was a man of such warmth and gen, genuinely. Uh, loved people and were was working for them and knew how to have a a quiet hilarious moment um, when he could so I'm like I'm glad to have some of those smiles Jennifer French we're grateful for uh, for you and and your ability to join us today thanks again thank you very much Deborah and thank you for doing this more memories of Ed Broadbent after we return 